Okay, let's get it over with. I should say something about Hillary Clinton's new book, What Happened? Uh, now, I should, first of all, preface it by saying I haven't read the whole thing. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, but certainly the excerpts that have come out uh, from the book have created quite a stir. So have her public comments as she publicizes the book. So I guess I would start with this. You know, obviously Hillary Clinton represents a certain wing of the Democratic Party, a wing of the party that's been in control for the last 25 years since Bill Clinton uh, accepted the, the Democratic nomination in 1992. Now, so I guess that's a little, yeah, okay, 25 years. Um, now, I do remember when Bill Clinton accepted that nomination to the tune of a little song called Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow. Uh, you may remember it, Fleetwood Mac, Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow. Uh, for a party uh, faction that defined itself with that song, it certainly seems nowadays like they can't stop thinking about yesterday. And this book, of course, uh, is an example of that. Th now, that's not to say that the past should be off limits. I don't believe that at all. I think we should talk about the past. That's how you learn from your mistakes. Um, but there seems to be this weird love-hate relationship with discussing the past when it comes to some people in the Democratic Party. For example, Democratic Party operative Paul Begala tweeted this the other day. New rule. Nobody is allowed to comment on Hillary's book until they have read the book. Well, I'm obviously breaking Paul Begala's rule, but why is it, first of all, that this faction of Democratic Party insider always seems to be giving other people rules about what they can say or can't say? It seems to happen all the time. You know, politics is public property. People can say whatever they want about politics. People can talk smack about other people when they talk about politics. That's what you do. It's politics. It's, it's kind of, it's the public square. It's where everybody goes and hangs out. Now, I will say this. I don't think it's productive to talk about things that have no relevance anymore. Uh, I think it's important not to stop thinking about tomorrow. So, for example, People who want to argue about Hillary Clinton's personality defects, I don't think that deserves a lot of time because if she's telling the truth when she says that she's not going to run again for political office, then her personality defects, uh, shortcomings, whatever you want to call them, don't matter anymore. We don't have to argue about them. But when Hillary Clinton picks fights that do matter, uh, that do influence the future, then I think it's time to talk about it. So we will restrict ourselves to that and not the personal stuff. Um, now, uh, let's say, for example, uh, Clinton's excerpts, the ones that were published in advance of the book, say that she was disappointed that her uh, campaign didn't channel the kind of energy enthusiasm that she saw during the Women's March uh, immediately after Trump's inauguration. Also that she blames both Bernie Sanders and his followers for contributing to his defeat. Now both of those statements have forward thinking implications. Um, they speak to the future of the progressive movement and I, I feel strongly about that. So Hillary Clinton writes, I couldn't help but ask where those about the women's march I, where were those feelings of solidarity outrage and passion during the election well i would say that question should inspire some self reflection uh, then, and the Democratic Party should think about why it's not inspiring that kind of enthusiasm. I would say that it's moved to, by, or at least by some of its members, to embrace Medicare for all will help change that. But a Democratic Party that's dependent on big donor money, as Clinton campaign, Clinton's campaign was at well, will always struggle to craft a coherent and exciting message. That's just the way it is. Now, Hillary Clinton has also gone on television to argue that uh, Bill, Bernie Sanders was more divisive than she was when she ran against Obama. Not true, actually. We could spell that out, but I don't think we need to. Uh, also, she continued to bash his supporters as being 
insufficiently uh, supportive of her during the general campaign. Here's the statistic everybody ought to know in that regard. 12% of Bernie Sanders' uh, primary voters went on to vote for Donald Trump in the general election. People have made a big deal of that. But 25%, more than twice as many, of Hillary Clinton primary supporters went on to vote for, uh, for John McCain. So the fact is Bernie supporters stepped up into their part. Once more, Bernie brought a lot of voters into the Democratic tent, so he actually added votes. I'm going to be talking more about this because the Democrats, many Democrats do understand, but more Democrats need to understand how helpful the Sanders movement has been to their party and how helpful it could be going forward. But that means starting to think about tomorrow because in the other cautionary following words of the Fleetwood Mac song, it'll soon be here.